Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. So if you're a Krita user like me, and you've started to get comfortable with where you've put dockers and things, and you have a certain rhythm and a workflow, how do you keep things where you put them? Stay with me, and I'll show you. Right, so let's just get right into it. So this is Krita. It is a free open source drawing tool uh, in case you're not familiar with it. This happens to be version 5.1.0, um, which I believe is latest and greatest as of this moment. Um, barring any nightly or uh, development uh, things that are out there, this is the latest stable release. All right, so this is what's called the default workspace and if you're unfamiliar with the concept of workspaces it's different layouts of different dockers and tool sets sometimes different brushes um, that are laid out if i were to switch for example into the animation one okay well this favors the animation module of krita where you can have the timeline and you can create your frames it's conducive to that these dockers are available really in any workspace but they're there's kind of pre-baked ones that help you get started in those different scenarios if you want to do those things. Now, I'm going to go back to default here for a minute. There may be things as you continue to use Krita that you're you're become comfortable having at your fingertips, but they don't stay there if you've noticed when you activate them and you come back in, and you might want them to stay there just so you don't have to keep flipping them back on or moving them around and getting comfortable when you lose a couple minutes getting back into the groove. So you can make your own workspaces. And this is a very simple tip. I'm gonna walk you through this very quickly. So under the settings, under dockers, these are the little modules and windows that fit around here and there. I want to flip on the snapshot docker, which by the way, I did a video about that previously. This is a very useful thing where you can take a moment in time, kind of a, a capture of where you are, what you're working on, and keep going, take another one, really, I think, take up to, I don't, I'm not aware of a documented limit, I'm sure there is, but it's high. Um, you can keep taking snapshots that appeared over here. And if you don't like where you're going, you can actually, with the click of a button, roll back into that snapshot and kind of wipe out the history of what you've been doing. So it's a very useful tool for that. There actually is an undo history option as well in the Docker. So there's some really cool things that you can tack on. Now, let's just say that, okay, this is cool, but this is now eating up the space over here. So mm, what if I were to pop this out and just dragging it, and I'm gonna put that over here into this space. You can kind of see how it adjusts a little bit depending on where I wanna put that. I want to drop that underneath it, all right? So that actually just created a new tab. You could do this a couple different ways where if I didn't like that, okay, well, I can drag this around a bit more just to kind of get to the place I want it to be and have it more accessible. All right, so if I like my snapshot there and I like that it is in that position of where my eye is going to look for it, what I can do then is go back to this workspaces button here and I can put in a name really any name, I'm not aware of any limitations or special characters yet, um, but I'm gonna call this Nate underscore PL underscore two, and I'm gonna save it, all right? And now we're gonna go through the exercise of, I'm gonna close this out, and we're gonna fire this back up, right? And I'm gonna kick on a new drawing just to have that ready for us here. All right. Now you may already notice it remembered my last workspace here because I saved it. This is exactly where I left it. And if I wanted to flip back to one of the workspaces, okay, well maybe that, you know, I wanna go back to the default. Um, I can do that and reset, or I made another one where I could hop into that as well. You can actually make different environments. You can make more than one if you're gonna be doing different things within the different tool sets of Krita. So this is a really cool way where you can save a lot of time getting all the pieces that are most useful to you, maybe making brushes more prominent in one of those views because uh, it maintains the sizing of that. Um, you can have that all ready for yourself. There's even a multi-screen mode where you can have that ready if you if you have a dual screen setup where you don't have to keep redoing things every time you come in. So one more facet of this that you might be asking is, okay, well, I've done it, but I really want to tweak 
the workspace. I don't want to make a new one. I just want to update the one I have. No problem. What you would do is switch on and adjust the things that you want and then go back into that workspaces. And all you have to do, this can be, it can be a little tricky, but all you have to do is put in exactly the same name as you've been working. You notice that this changes to overwrite now. So just overwrite it and it has been saved without making a second one. If you want to remove one, by the way, also as well, you can select that and there's the trash can here where you just get rid of that and it is no more. All right, but that's really the whole gist of this is just making the most out of what you want to do and being ready so you don't have to restack it again. All right, so if this was useful to you, I know this was quick and easy and that's really what this is designed to do. Make it simple, make it easy so you can get more done in these tools. Uh, give me a thumbs up if it was useful. Also subscribe if you haven't done that already and leave a comment. Ask a question for the whole community of learners. I love when we can help each other and grow in our experience and become stronger together. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. And also, please consider looking at the items in the description below. I do have some eBooks available, which is really helpful for supporting this channel. There's no pressure involved, uh, but those are available if you're curious to learn more about content creation. I'm sharing some of the secrets and things that I've learned uh, through my journey. Also, I have a Patreon page, which I'll link below as well, if you're curious and, and very interested to support the channel uh, to keep us going there. Again, no pressure, no obligation. I will continue to provide as best as I am able, but those things certainly help keep me going. So thank you for your time. Thank you for sticking with me to this point in the video. I appreciate you, and I will see you at the next video.